Hello and welcome to the Matthias iOS development show with me, Matthias, your iOS developer. And uh, it's in the afternoon, it's nice weather, it's quiet, got my coffee, let's do this. Today we're going to talk about array sorting and how you can make your own custom array sorting algorithm. Uh, it's possible in Swift, there are some nice options available, let's just walk through them. So I got my playground open, uh, running this in Xcode 12.1, just updated yesterday, running on Swift 5.3. And let's just start with regular arrays we already have and then work towards uh, what we want to have. So I made us an array of integers, which has a number 0, 12, 64, 7000 something to see. And uh, what you can do with a regular array is you can call intarray.sort to automatically sort everything that's in here, just, by, just like that. And if you run it, you see that now we get a different output. The array is now sorted in 0, 0, 2, 12, etc. What is also super nice is that this thing works with strings. So if you make a string array, hello, A, B. So, so here we have a string array which is not sorted at all. And if we call string array dot sort on it and we run it, what happens then is that this is also sorted alphabetically which is a super nice feature. Now, you, you might have seen uh, in the autocompletion that there's two sorting functions, sort, sort, and uh, they are sort and sorted. And what the difference is here is that sort does the sorting in place, as in it changes the array we're calling this on, and sorted returns us a new different array. So we can say let new array equals string array sorted and now we actually copy the array and then sort it through and there's there's lots of um, there's lots of examples where and cases where you might want to do the one might want to do the in place sorting or you might want to do the copied sorting but that's just to get the, the standard sorting out of the way but let's go back to the int array sorting and what this thing is doing here basically this is this entire thing int array dot sort is short for saying int array dot sort open curly bracket and then we say dollar sign zero smaller than dollar sign one. Now I'm just going to remove this one here for our case and let's run it. Oh, you can see already uh, this one also sorts through the array. And this is basically the condition by which we want to sort the thing. So if we say we're compared to the first element with the next element, we want the final thing to be, we want the first one to be smaller than the next one, and so on. So basically every every element combination should follow these rules that we put down here. And you're already thinking, hey, hang on a second, this is just a smaller, smaller than sign. What if we change this to a larger than sign and run this thing through? And if we do this, you can you can totally see here, hey, hang on a second, this is now sorted from the top to the bottom. Hey, isn't this neat? Going even further, this actually, this dollar sign zero is bigger than dollar sign one, smaller than dollar sign one, is even more a shorthand. This is shorthand for if dollar sign one is larger than dollar sign zero, if dollar sign zero is larger than dollar sign one, then we say return true. And otherwise, we return false. And I'm just going to throw in here return false just to shut up the compiler because they always want to return in here. And what this basically means is um, if this condition is true, oh no, this is actually fine, we don't need this. If this condition here is true, if in this case where we want to sort from the top to the bottom, uh, $0 zero is higher than $0 sign one. Uh, then we return a true, and that means that element, the first element, should come first. Otherwise, that element should come after the other one. And this can be then um, shortened again into just saying, oh, okay, if this is, because, because this is a, this is a, this is um, a case that evaluates to be either true or false. And with this knowledge, you can already see, hang on a second, that means we can put in more complicated logic here, can we not? Yes, we can. So let's um, let's put all of this one here just into an algorithm, which we can then call. I'm going to start with this. Going to keep it the same. Going to call it func integer 
sorting algorithm. But I'm going to open a bracket. First int. Second, also an int. And it has to return a boolean. It has to be true or false. Yeah, so return first is bigger than second. And now we can call this by saying int array sort by our integer sorting algorithm. <coughs> and we can run the same thing again. And we get again an, an array sorted from the top to the bottom. And what's happening here? This is our own, or this is our own closure, our own sorting function we put in here. And uh, these are our two elements which we have here up as dollar sign zero, dollar sign one. And um, I'm wrote, I'm writing these out as first and second. Now I've seen people writing them out as a and b or lhs and rhs. This this stands for left hand side and right hand side respectively. I'm not a fan of this at all because this is supposed you know. Uh, if you say uh, LHS and RHS, you have abbreviations, which is not really that readable. And if you have A or B, this is a one one very one letter variable, which it could be fine. But but then probably your linter will also complain, like, yeah, just don't 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 do this one letter variable thing, because this will cause issue in the future. And um, now now we're going to show you how to make this into our own custom algorithm. So right now we've been sorting integers and strings. Which is which is easy enough, but uh, I had this I had this curious case when I was working on an own project. It was a to do app where you can mask you can you can mark 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 you can mark a task as either being being to do or being done, and we did this with a task state. Let's say enum, and we say case to do case done, and then we have a bunch of Task structs. Say it has a let name, string, and it has a status, task state. And uh, let's, let's just create a few. So for task array, I'm just going to turn off my coffee machine. <laughs> And uh, yeah, we have our tasks. We have our tasks, and um, we have our tasks, and let's just create a few uh, for our thing. So we say var task array equals task. What do we call it? Um, water. Writing this short for debug purposes, but it's like oh, drink water. And the status is task state done. Fun thing about structs, you know, uh, this uh, and you know, initialize in general, this thing uh, has to be a task state, so we can already abbreviate it to be either done or to do. Uh, it doesn't have to be task state dot done. So we say again, task uh, walk, take a walk outside. To do. Let's do a third one. And we're gonna say task play the guitar also to do. Now let's, let's make this one done. And if we run this, what we're gonna see in our output on the right here. Okay, we got it listed by done, to do, done. And what we wanna do now is we wanna create an algorithm that lists the to do one first and then shows the done ones. And we can do this by taking our integer sorting algorithm and adapting it. I'm going to call it task sorting algorithm. <coughs> and we're not putting ints in there, we're putting tasks in there. So first is a task, second is a task, we're still returning a bool. And now we're not returning one is higher than the other. Uh, I'm just going to put this on here to not have the compiler throw, it, throw an error. So what we want to say is we want to have the ones that are to do first in the list. So we say if first status equals to do, then return true. 
and we can write this out further. We can say else if first status equals done, then return false. And this is uh, this is a bit written out. This is a bit verbose. Uh, we, we're going to we're going to beautify this in a second. So what we're doing here basically is we compare our all of our elements first to the second element. And if the first one is a to do, then we're already done because the to do will always be on top, so we can already return true. But if the first one is not to do, it's if it's a done thing, then we return false. And we mean okay, this one is supposed to come afterwards. Uh, we can of course um, beautify this. We can just say we, we can make this an else because there's only two cases right now. And you know we, we can even remove this else and we can just say <clears throat> if first is to do, then return true, or even put this into a ternary, uh, which I'm not doing right now. We want to keep this kind of readable. And uh, but now we're going to make this more complicated. Now we want to say okay, we don't have two task states. We don't have to do and done. We also have the case of failed. That is a task which you can fail in a day, where you say, uh, eat no candy, they don't eat any candy. And there's a point uh, during the day where you can say, okay, I've eaten some candy, this task is failed. It's not done, it's not to do. Uh, we, are not, we, we, won't, we won't be able to do this task anymore. So we can fail it. And the way we want to list it is we want to have the to-do ones on top, the ones that are done underneath and the ones that are failed all in a block underneath. So let's just add a third one to here to our list candy and we're gonna give it failed to fail status. And I uh, just want to get the output here. So we have the list done, to do, failed and the last one is also done. And uh, now we want to sort this in a way where now we want to sort this in a way where, as we mentioned, it comes in, in to do, done, and then failed. And uh, hang on a second, we didn't run the other thing. Uh, so yeah, so you can you can simplify the the the, the, the algorithm even further. And if we run it, if we say task array sort by task sorting algorithm <coughs> no need those here in the moment what happens is the output will become sorted like one of it, it becomes into to do done done while at the beginning it was done to do done hey nice check it out we just wrote our own semi-complex custom sorting algorithm sweet now we want to make this more complicated now we want to have um, a third task state in here. So now we want to be able to not have a task be only just to do and done, but also to have it be failed. And uh, wrote this in here. Uh, so we have our case to do, case done, case failed. And what this means is you can have a task where you can objectively fail it during the day. Say a task is don't eat any candy. And then there can be a point at which you say, okay, the task is failed. We are not thinking about this anymore. And the listing should be, okay, at the top we have the to-do tasks, then come the done tasks, and then comes a huge block of the failed tasks. So let's just write another one in here. Task name no candy. And then the status is failed. Oh, that's a comma. And if we see our list out here, uh, it's done, to do, okay, no candy, thank you very much. Done, to do, failed, and this one is also done. And what we wanna have down here is, um, this isn't working yet, this is still running the old one. This is the same to do, done, failed, yeah. We want this thing to list them all in blocks. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna write these out in pseudocode first because that makes it more understandable. So. We want the to-do ones on top, done, failed. And if we write now, okay, if we check if the first one is already, status is already to-do, <coughs> then we can immediately say, okay, return true. This one will always be on top. To-do ones will always be on top. 
if we go for the face failed one, if we say if the first is already failed, then this one will always be at the bottom. Doesn't matter what else is happening. So you can already say, okay, this one is already false. Get more, it, get, it, it gets more complicated if the first one is actually done. Because if the first one is done and the second one is to do, then we want the second one to come first. But if the first one is done and the second one is failed, then we want the first one to come first. So here we say, if first status equals done. And then we gotta ask what the status of the second one is. So we go, if second status equals to do. So now we return false because we want the to-do one to come first. But if the second status in this case is failed, then we want the done one to come first. So we return true. And uh, yeah, looks pretty good. Let's give it a spin. <coughs> and what do we got? Okay, we got our array sorted by to do, done, done, failed. Nice! We just wrote a much more complicated sorting algorithm for our own for our own custom struct and the way we want to sort this. Now this of course can be um beautified a lot and put into a much more complicated, uh, a much more elegant, I mean, expression. And um of course, we can also uh, also clean this up. Uh, so, so the last one, if status has failed, is return false. We don't need that check here then, because if we come to that check, it is a failed task, and we can already return false. We can also return this. Remove this one here. This can just be a regular else, and um, probably turn this into a ternary, ternary operator of some sort if you're so inclined. And yeah, that is it. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to leave a like underneath the video. Uh, this is my first one. Uh, super happy, uh, super looking forward to, to it. And very important, if you can press that like button, mm, don't forget it. Also follow me on Twitter, I'm Matthias underscore code for more output similar to this and the other stuff I'm doing. Thank you so much for watching and see you next episode.